figured it was time for another update. So, you probably noticed that I've got a weird thing on my head. And that is because it's like a little mesh deal that covers up a series of, of arrays. And I will put some pictures of that. There are a positive and negative set front to back and side to side. And there is a device here that has a battery in it. It's also plugged into the wall at the moment that I'm tethered to. That's what this thing is. Looks like I'm part of being a Borg or maybe something from Doctor Who. Uh, and that is uh, creating an electromagnetic field across, the, uh, across my brain. And for your healthy cells, they're not affected. But for the unhealthy cells, the cancer cells, uh, they get interrupted. Their ability to uh, reproduce and and, uh, uh, and communicate with each other is, uh, is affected. And they die off and uh, or are seen by the immune system. And they then die off. And of the three treatments that I'm doing, I've got two study drugs, Keytruda and Limparza, which are off-label. And those are a study. We went, we're looking to see if this is going to work taking advantage of, uh, of some of the um, mutations in the DNA of the cancer. This, this is the only FDA-approved uh, treatment that I'm currently on. And I just started this Tuesday, so um, I guess that puts us in um, four days into this thing. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yes, four days into it. Changed the arrays out yesterday. Uh, they're good for, um, let's change them out every two to three, three to four, depending on how fast your hair grows or if you, if you start getting the itchies underneath. So you're going to give your head a little bit of a chance. The goal is to try to be on this thing of 75% of every month. The longer you're on it, the better the, uh, the, better the therapeutic effect. And uh, on Facebook, there is a Optune page. And I have to tell you, it's of the brain cancer pages that I am a part of and I monitor. So far, it's probably the one that gives me the most hope uh, because unfortunately the other ones it's you know daily you're reminded that uh, somebody you know three four five people a day on those pages lose somebody that either has been a caregiver announces that uh, they've lost their loved one or uh, we find out that people just no longer post anymore because they've lost their battle and it happens uh, unfortunately way too frequently and it's a reminder that there at the moment there's no cure for brain cancer and that's why to me it's really important to be part of these studies because there needs to be a breakthrough and the fact that I get to participate in this gives me um, not only hope but also it, it gives me purpose I mean if you're going to be taking a journey like this I at least want the journey to uh, to be helpful to others. So anyway, with that said, uh, the Optune device is it says the only one I'm on right now that is FDA approved and shows life extension. Um, and although they used to say that it added three to six months on average, what I'm seeing on these pages, there are people there that are on there that are three years in, five years in, since this thing came out. And uh, and it may have been out there in trials that I'm not aware of, but I'm seeing a lot of three and five year people. And I, in brain cancer, that's exceptional. Because three years, you know, fewer than 10% make it to three years. It's, I think it's somewhere around the um, five, eight percent, something like that, uh, can make it to three years. And then for five years, uh, on average, it's less than three. I think they're pushing it up a little bit closer to five. And I think it's because of this device here. 
with that being said, there's so many people on there that, uh, you know, when you first join and, and they tell you, hang in there, stay with it, use as much as you can. I'm on year three or I'm on year four. You'll get used to it. And I have to admit, there is, a, there is going to be a, uh, a period of time where it's, I'm going to need to adjust to this because I'm tethered everywhere I go. Um, and you've got unplug if you're plugged into the wall. The batteries um, only last three hours. So if you unplug from the wall, you've got to change out batteries. And unfortunately, my hearing is so bad on high frequencies that when the alarm goes off, I don't even hear it. So I periodically have to look at it to see if where the battery is, um, if there is a um, a red light, let me know that I've actually unplugged something because that does happen. You've got you've got a cord that you're tethered to. Um, there's little inside this little deal here. There's little plugs, and you got to make sure that those are all snapped in good because if they don't you'll end up with a, with a warning, and of course I can't hear it. And uh, so I'm going to ask them if there's a way to turn that up, but it's a pretty cool device, really neat using the uh, electromagnetic radiation to interrupt the cell division of the defective cells um, without having the toxicities of taking a, uh, another drug. So anyway, that's kind of my update. Uh, I've had some people ask me about the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. I have talked to my neuro-oncologist about it. He is recommending I get it. I know there's a lot of folks that are saying, you know, I don't want to take anything that's going to be altering my DNA. Um, well, the reality of it is everything we do is altering our DNA. Just existing in life is altering your DNA because you're being hit with all kinds of different radio waves. Uh, radiation, we eat so much stuff that is uh, uh, chemically treated or, or genetically grown, genetically modified, and so on. And of course, every time you get any type of virus and you get over it, well, now you are carrying those antibodies and oftentimes that, uh, uh, that information is obviously then stored in your DNA. So you are, you know, we always are altering our DNA all the time. But however, in my particular case, I'm already on two DNA altering uh, immunotherapy drugs. And so adding a third one, um, discussing it with them, just wanting to make sure that we weren't going to be tainting our, um, uh, our study by adding a third DNA, within this case, it's the mRNA altering uh, of, the, uh, of the COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, but, you know, he and I discussed it. We talked about the fact that these vaccines have actually been in the works for years and years and years um, for uh, the first go rounds of, of, of the various COVIDs before this one, um, before, it, you know, it was, became a pandemic uh, virus. And, of course, with the various SARS and, and colds and that kind of thing, they've been looking for ways of dealing with uh, viruses like this. Uh, but also, these this research has led to uh, ways of getting into cancer cells to trigger the immune system uh, to see cancer cells and let the immune system go after them. So this type of treatment's been around for a long time. And there may be that by adding the uh, COVID-19 to the other immunotherapy drugs, you know, serendipitously it could ultimately end up being uh, maybe the breakthrough and, and uh, you know that could be looked at in the future uh, if nothing else if it creates an immune response making your immune system go into a uh, into a hyper mode um, and the fact that I'm on the other immunotherapy drugs except for the possibility I might have a an over response of the immune system where it tries to attack various other organs. Outside of that, there is the possibility that it will trigger an immune response towards the cancer cells. And inadvertently, we come up with just the right combination 
of immunotherapy different you know three immunotherapy drugs that end up attacking the glioblastoma multiform cancer cells and that would be pretty exciting in itself so I'm not overly concerned um, I've been very careful about uh, where we go and that kind of thing but uh, as far as COVID-19 I can control currently I can control if and when I go out and when I do I've been wearing a mask and so on uh, that's you know that's something I can do I can control my environment um, and I do not want anybody to have to alter their uh, their lives, their business, and everything else to try to protect people like myself who have compromised immune systems. We can control what we're doing. Um, we can stay in our house while this thing gets worked out. Um, and, you know, either I'm either going to get the vaccine or I'm going to get COVID-19. It's just, it's, it's bound to happen. Uh, seeing uh, the stories of the folks with uh, brain cancer uh, that have uh, counting COVID-19, it doesn't appear that it makes things any worse. If you have uh, lung issues, uh, you're going to have more problems. If you had heart issues, you're going to have more problems, uh, just like the general population. Um, obviously, we're in a more weakened state, and some of the drugs we're on definitely weakens our immune system, but I haven't uh, seen anything yet that's indicating, of course, you know, it's not scientific, just seeing what people are saying online that are going through this journey, are saying, you know, yeah, I had it, and, uh, you know, I got over it within two weeks, I was done. Um, you know, I'm still having some side effects, which seems to be kind of, uh, that seems to be the, in the normal population, or, or the healthy population appears to be also the situation. So, again, COVID-19, just in a breeze right on through this. We're going to get the vaccine when it's available. Uh, until then, I am uh, going to watch what I'm doing and where I go. Uh, not working, obviously, with the can't work anymore. And uh, as of uh, uh, December, I've had, uh, uh, maybe it's end of November, I lose track now. Uh, I've been on disability. And so with Joni's health insurance and the Medicare uh, part A and B of this, um, you know, I think we're in a pretty good uh, place. So as far as everyone who's donated to the GoFundMe, um, I'm just blown away. One, I mean, we're, we're over 18,000. So, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, that is humbling in every way. And that money... Although it, it sounds like a lot of money, but when you can no longer work and you are the primary breadwinner uh, and you can no longer do that, um, you know, we were able to use uh, the money to pay doctor bills uh, to last year to pay down. Um, hopefully I can get some of that back because of the, uh, they did retro, uh, do some of this retroactively. Um, but as far as getting the, um, being able to pay down some uh, uh, household bills uh, to to shrink our monthly outflows. That's been extremely helpful. Um, so for everyone who has donated and for those who uh, want to donate or continue to donate, thank you so very much. Um, and again, Joni and I are being extremely frugal. Um, we are, do not want to disrespect people's uh, generosity. Um, so we are using this, using the money uh, to try to position us in a uh, better place so that between Joni's income uh, at Bass Pro and the disability check, which uh, is not uh, is not a lot of money, um, you still got to pay your Medicare out of that. Uh, but with that being said, we're trying to get ourselves in a position here where you know, we can stay within our means and not not have to fall back on, on what's left of the savings. Um, and um, also, we're not running a deficit every month. Currently, we're still in deficit spending. Uh, it's not horrible. Way better than it was. So people's donations and everyone's donations, friends and family and so on. Thank you so very much. It is 
definitely appreciated, definitely needed. And so we are paying things down as quickly as we possibly can. We're down to, um, uh, I have one uh, outstanding business loan uh, from uh, uh, the Reed Enterprise side of things, not Reed Home Construction, uh, and the house. Uh, the rest of the debt is, uh, you know, we were already so close uh, with the, the Joni's cars paid off. My truck has uh, been paid off. Um, I had a business loan for uh, HVAC system um, that I needed to get paid off. And I was finally able to get that taken care of. So uh, obviously, being on disability, you're limited on any additional money you could make during the month. So, um, but donations don't count against that. But as far as uh, me trying to find additional income sources that I can do, um, I'm limited on, on what I can do. I have some, I have a, a the welder sales, uh, which brings in a few hundred dollars a month, which is really, really handy. And, um, but again, it's, it falls short of uh, where we were. So again, thank you, everyone. Thank you so very much. Um, I will cut this off because I know we're getting up there 16 minutes. is pretty long. So thank you again. Uh, God bless. And remember, faith, faith begets courage. And with courage, you can have a sense of humor, which is kind of important. And combined... God gives us strength. So, you know, that's something we all have to remember is that some these journeys that we take, these these bumps in our road are the the hills and the valleys are all necessary for us to not only spiritually grow, but to be the people we are today. And um, you know, there are always opportunities to grow. They're not they're not curses. So this journey is not a curse, it's an opportunity. Again, thank you very much.